Well, did you know that March 15 every year is World Consumers Day? Well, today is World Consumers Day, a day that deals with uh, you and I who usually consume uh, regular articles, even things as intangible as etiquette. And uh, we have with us today uh, Mr. Babatunde Irukera, who is the Director General of the Consumer Protection Council. Now, how have they been doing their job protecting our rights? Well, that's why we—that's the question we posed today. Thank you for answering us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. So, I mean, I'm sure this must be a very tough one, considering that you know level of service here in the country can be termed not very good. I mean, and that's a, that's a really kind phrase to use. Oh, um, it's interesting you asked that question because last week I was um, away at a discussion amongst um, other African consumer protection authorities. And what I discovered, and, and obviously with the US FTC there also, but what I discovered is that uh, the nature of the challenges are actually the same across the board. Are they? They are, absolutely. They're actually exactly the same. Now, um, the, the, the range and how broad or how deep the issues are may materially change from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. But the, 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 the point is that consumers are the same all over the world and they're becoming more and more discriminatory. They know exactly what they want and they're demanding it a lot more. And companies are beginning to realize that it's important and that that's really going to be the core of their business. What I, have, what I would say is a problem uh, in a place like Nigeria and certainly in other parts, especially Africa, is whether we have developed and institutionalized both private side and government side mechanisms for addressing um, consumer rights. And I think that that's why a day like the World Consumer Rights Day is important. Mm. Um, I think that hits the nail on the head because, as you rightly said, the issues might be the same, but then the question will be the response of you know the authorities uh, that have the responsibility to, to help out. So how would you say, you know, would you, would you say that people have faith and confidence that an organization, for instance, like a consumer rights can actually protect their rights, especially when their rights have been infringed upon? Yes, yes, I, I would say people have faith, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to also put out there that there's a fine line between how this uh, consumer complaints should actually be addressed. Mm. It seems that we've, we, we, we look at addressing complaints against products and services as um, a state responsibility. In actual fact, there's a commercial contract between a consumer and uh, a goods or service provider. And so that commercial contract also has a social pact in it. And so the role of government is just like everything else in business or trade, which is facilitation, regulation, and moderation. The role of government is to make sure that that relationship is working well. And that's one of the things I've been saying to businesses uh, in the period that I've been in the job that, listen, resolving consumer complaints and satisfying consumers is your responsibility. And it's not some corollary or ancillary part of your business. It's the core of your business. You know right. no, and, and so, I mean, think about it. In a place like Nigeria, for instance, 774 local government areas, 36, million, 36 states and 200 million people. A consumer protection council, at least the one I had, of less than 300 employees in a, about nine offices across the country. How much can you really do? And so it's, the reality of it is, and, and that's why in those other places, especially the West, the mechanisms have been developed and pushed over onto the private sector. So take, it, take for instance, if you were somewhere in England or in the United States and there was something wrong with a product. The first place you're thinking about is not the government. You're thinking about the service provider or the goods producer itself. And so that's the, that's the paradigm shift that we need to make sure we're using the, 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 the authority of government to enforce. Director General, you know, when, when we, we oftentimes Nigerians think of uh, consumer protection, you probably go to food products, you probably go to the tangibles. I want to ask you about some of the intangibles. You know, when you, I, I understand recently you've undertaken a partnership with the Nigerian Medical Association to develop a patient's bill of rights. Now, Given something uh, as important as that, how would would you assess and say that the CPC has the teeth that's needed to bite down uh, on kind of enforcement uh, in some of these critical areas? I would say that. I mean, the, the law is very clear. The law provides that teeth. But uh, like everything else, institutionalizing enforcement is something that 
comes over a period of time. First, you must have consistent leadership and focus on those questions of enforcement, and there must be consequence management. One of the problems I've seen with uh, behavioral uh, approach to consumer uh, consumerism is a consequence management system, whether in the government side or on the private side. It just seems like you know, I mean, the worst that can happen if someone's displeased with anything is an apology. So until we institutionalize a consequence management system that makes it, um, um, uh, uh, it, it does, it, it's no longer worth it. But, but did you? what are some of the force winds that are kind of working against progress in consumer protection? I mean, you're talking about institutionalizing, you know, enforcement, etc. But what are you seeing on ground in Nigeria as it relates to that? For one thing, education. And consumers really recognizing what their rights are. Second thing is how we can enforce standards. So creating and maintaining the appropriate standards, which is not primarily the work of a consumer. The SON uh, is there. Yes. So, so there are other, and not just even the SON, there are other organizations that set standards in different industries, even service level st technical standards, whether it's electricity and all of that. And so uh, enforcing standards is a bottom, I mean, it's, it's, it's the ground zero of uh, appropriate consumer uh, protection. And so we're going to continue to have, I mean, you know, just the same problem we have with terrorism and all of that, our borders are porous, and all kinds of goods can get into the country and all of that. So it's, it's a very, we have to approach it from, from a 360 degree standpoint. So that, I suppose that answers your question as far as addressing some of the challenges. You know, DG, you go to some of these, uh, even, even very elite shopping centers in the capital and Lagos and other metro uh, metropolitan cities, and you find that you can go in there and get uh, a, a product at a, a globally recognized price, for example, a high-end uh, headphone, for example, and then you take it home, you find out after a week or two it crumbles, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, we see this issue across the board, counterfeit products, fake products. What stops, for example, your agency, uh, uh, the CPC, from going into some of these stores and literally taking them off the shelves because of you know, the illegality of what these people are, are, are retailing out there? Actually, we are doing that, but um, uh, the example you give is not the biggest problem. In most of the high-end stores, for the most part, most of what you're getting, the bigger problems are further down uh, the food chain. You're talking about adulterated uh, drinks. That are that's more NAFTAC, though, not so? Well, enforcement is across the board. So that's NAFTAC, that's on, that's Consumer Protection Council. And so we're going to prioritize. And at a much lower level, you're talking about things that are costing lives. You're talking about ad, um, fake um, fixtures and fittings and wiring cables, uh, getting people electrocuted. And so you're going to look at what the real um, resource and the assets we have on ground and uh, prioritize what the enforcement priorities must be. I'm wondering, I, I thought CBC worked a bit more like uh, a more national Servicom. I mean, do you work with Servicom? It seems that from what you're describing, your roles seem to overlap with some regulatory agencies. Is that how it works? I get this question a lot, but Servicom is an internal government mechanism to improve this, so the quality of public service that interfaces with the public. Now, the Consumer Protection Council is across the board. It has to do with private citizens providing private services or private goods and all of that. Yeah, that's what so, I mean. But when you begin to get into standards, for instance, and, and you know, going to confiscate, for instance, things that are substandard or not up to standard, uh, isn't that the business of, say, Standards Organization of Nigeria or of NAFDAQ, as the case might be? Those are overlap, overlapping regulatory uh, jurisdictional issues. And that's exactly a design. Overlapping regulation is a design, and it's not uncommon. And so what happens is that all different regulators have roles in different spaces, but sometimes their roles are, uh, converge. And so what you do is collaborate, uh, sometimes leverage on the strength of one or the other. Each regulator has some level of specialization in something. And I take, for instance, I mean, let's, let's just use criminal, let's just look at the criminal space, for instance. Look at drugs, narcotics. You've got uh, customs that's looking out for narcotics. You've got uh, a Nigerian Drug uh, Law and Enforcement Agency that's also looking out for narcotics. Then you've got the police. They're also a law enforcement authority. Mm -hmm. And so it's not unusual that you have regulatory overlap. So it's just, and, and many things that where regulations overlap all over the world actually underscores the problem and mm -hmm. the importance of uh, the approach to regulating that space. Mm -hmm.